Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Well, yes and no, because one of these is super fake. What is up? I'm Wanna Turtle, and today we're not doing an opening. We're actually talking about something that's very unfortunate that happens in the hobby, and that is fake cards. Uh, we're going to take a look at a bunch of different examples for uh, singles and different kinds of, uh, whether it's regular GX, Rainbow Rare, and then we're actually going to look at some uh, sealed stuff as well. Um, yeah, it's very unfortunate, but there is a lot of fake stuff out there. I feel like, you know, back when Pokemon first came out, it was fortunately, well, yeah, fortunately kind of very easy to tell. You could just hold the card up to light and like, dude, you can see right through this thing. This thing is super fake. But things have come a long way since then, unfortunately. And um, so we'll go through a couple best practices, you know, and the first part is going to be like, if something sounds really good or potentially too good to be true, there's a good chance it is. Uh, so always be vigilant when you see like, oh, this is a very good deal on eBay, um, especially when the seller doesn't have many sold, uh, many, you know, doesn't have a lot of um good reviews and like this just the amount of sales is not very high and uh let's take a look at some examples so one kind of nice thing is that in the recent years they added texturing to cards especially for the max rarity and i'm a huge fan of texturing i wish they did more of it. i feel like they kind of like reduced the amount of texture they add to cards these days more recently but it makes it very easy to spot a counterfeit we're going to look at this espions and uh, you can probably already tell this one is the fake one. It's just very smooth. And just, I put this in a hard case just as a joke. It's not even in a sleeve. But as you can see, um, no texturing at all. And kind of like the foil pattern is kind of uniform as you look, up, look at that stripe kind of going across. And then let's take a look at this one. Although it would probably be easier if we took it out of both of its sleeves. So compared to this guy, and again, it's really nice that there's a lot of texture on it. So that is the surefire way to tell whether a card is real, especially when you're talking about max rarity. Uh, there was a person on our Discord that posted a picture of his buddy pulling a Rainbow Rare Charizard. And I was super worried because I took one look at it it's like, oh my gosh, that thing is fake. I ended up like direct messaging him. And luckily, it turns out he asked his friend about it. Like, it turned out to be a joke. So it was the person was in on it but you know that would be the ultimate disaster is you spend a lot of money on a card you get it and then let's say a month or two later it's like oh my gosh you realize someone tells you that it's fake and then all of a sudden you lost uh, hundreds of dollars so that's definitely something we want to make uh prevent and again texture is the easiest way to tell so here is a bunch of high rarity cards that should have texturing so you can see all of them they're kind of like very flat image very smooth surefire way to tell and let's go to some harder ones so once you get into the rarities like the regular gx regular ex is a little bit harder to tell but i think the kind of like that uniform foil pattern is kind of like a good giveaway as well um, a lot of cards non-gx's like they kind of have that wavy foil pattern luckily you can kind of use that uh so this slow bro it's kind of hard to tell but like the foil pattern is not uniform throughout there are certain things that just have more usually there's none on the actual pokemon it's just like the background that is foil um but again once you get in the like the regular ultra rare category rarity it's a little bit harder to tell let's go to the back so this one is significantly lighter and another thing is after a while you kind of just become familiar with the feel of the cardstock Whenever things are feeling extra smooth, almost like a laminated feel, that's another red flag is, okay, maybe this card is fake. And uh, so here's a bunch of ones that like these regular GXs, like this one, to be honest, that would be hard to tell. Uh, obviously the back kind of gives it away, but yeah, some of these regular GXs, they're, uh, the, the full art, luckily the full art is for uh, texturized again. But yeah, a lot of these other ones, just a little bit harder to tell. After a while, uh, you just can tell right away, but uh, can be a little bit difficult. 
Uh, there is one surefire way to tell if a car is fake and has to rip it. That's a pretty bad solution. It's like, oh, turns out that was real. But uh, this is a good example. So as we kind of rip this, you can clearly see that there's something just kind of taped on, glued on to there. And that is the, this is like the cardstock. And then this is the little thing that they printed to put on the card. So stay vigilant out there, guys. Uh, again, luckily, luckily, um, for ultra rare or the max rarity, almost they're always, almost always textured. So you can see plenty of texturing on there. That's a pretty good way to tell. Versus this guy. And this one actually pretty easy to tell. It's super thick stock, but uh, super flat image. Um, pretty easy giveaway that the card is fake. And after I put this guy back in here, actually, we'll just set us off to the side. And let's take a look at some booster boxes. Ultra Prism. Wow. That's a pretty rare booster box. These things probably go for a lot of money. Um, but not this one. This thing is super fake. So a couple of instant giveaways is when you look at the ceiling, there's none of these Pokeballs that say Pokemon on it. And the other one is the coloring is kind of weird. But then, although sometimes this is actually a real box, but just with fake packs inside. And oh, you can, this thing looks kind of strange. But then the orientation of the packs is probably like the, the wrapping and then the orientation of packs. These ones are also upside down. But whenever the packs are kind of in this orientation facing this way, um, so there's basically like 36 packs going like that versus them, usually they're kind of like face forward and two rows of 18. And that's probably the easiest way to tell. So once I saw this, like, okay, I know already this thing is fake. And uh, and let's just take a look at two side by side that are the same box, Burning Shadows. So yeah, looking for that <laughs> Rainbow Charizard. You probably have good luck finding one in here, but again, it's going to be fake. And compared to this box, so Pokeball is on there that say Pokemon. Well, this is kind of faded and then the packs kind of oriented in that facing forward and two rows of 18. let's see actually this box is also kind of small which is kind of strange and um but yeah those are the easiest ways to tell so very clearly none of those things are there and uh but yeah let's see go a couple best practices you buy something um like max rarity you know just try to have an idea of things to check for again texturing um that that foil pattern and you know the ebay seller themselves uh, if they don't have a lot of um you know confirmed sales and the rating is not high like automatically just be very suspicious once you get the card uh re one record the opening and two you know do a thorough check uh feel the card and stuff like that same thing for sealed product you know there's nothing that is safe um just be on the lookout for those kinds of things. So I hope this was helpful. I just wanna give one more piece of advice and that is use the protections that you kind of have as a consumer through the vendor or kind of like the platform that you're making the purchase. So whether it's through eBay, TCG player or whatever, um, and that's kind of like why I try to steer away from buying stuff off Facebook or Instagram, even though I'm sure there's plenty of legit sellers, but you know, through like something like eBay, you know, they do have a lot of things in place to support you as a buyer and you kind of work through them. Look, I think this car is fake. You can communicate with the seller. Um, most of the time, again, unfortunately is that the seller didn't even know, or at least they'll say they didn't know. It's like, oh, you know, my son just gave me this, said they had it from 10 years ago. And so I told him I'd try to sell it for them. And you know, usually no matter what, eBay will have your back. Uh, TCJ player will have your back and they will sort it out for you. You know, they do have to be prepared for situations like this. And um, so yeah, Hope this is helpful, and uh, if you have any other tips, uh, li list them in a comment down below, and I'd be happy to, you know, pin pin like a good suggestion or bubble up in another video. So, uh, hope this, you know, let me know what your thoughts are, and uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, but this stuff happens, so you definitely have to be vigilant, especially when you think you found a good deal. So, thanks for watching, guys. As always, like, comment, and subscribe, all down below. I'm Moana Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time.